Hello, everybody. It's me, Jeremy Senpai, and after a long, long hiatus, I'm giving you yet another video where I talk about random entertainment stuff, and I look at it from a bit of a closer inspection. And what will we be talking about today, everybody? We'll be talking about Fairly Odd Parents. Or specifically, we'll be talking about Timmy's teacher, the fairy-obsessed Denzel Crocker. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, Mr. Crocker is basically Timmy's homeroom teacher in school, and he's one of the few humans in the world self-aware that fairies exist. And he knows that Timmy has fairy godparents, but at the same time, he is plotting in every appearance to try and steal Timmy's fairies away from him. However, as we find out in the episode The Secret Origin of Denzel Crocker, we find out that Crocker actually lived a very similar life to Timmy did, or should I say does now. <clears throat> Crocker not, was raised by a single mother who probably had to work two jobs in order to support them. He was left with an abusive babysitter named Vic, who honestly I'm convinced is just Vicky's dad when he was a teenager. Seriously, they do look alike. Maybe he grew out of it as he got older and Vicky inherited some of that. Maybe that's a theory for another video. But we also find out that Crocker even had his own fairy godparents. Not just any fairy godparents, mind you. We find out that he had Cosmo and Wanda, Timmy's very own fairies themselves. <clears throat> it's worth noting that Timmy did go back in time to try and find out why Crocker was so miserable in his adult life. Specifically, not on a specific date. And then we find out on that specific date, because Timmy interfered, because Timmy interfered with Crocker's childhood, which indirectly led to his fairies being outed, and then, and then Crocker was, was stripped of his memories of Cosmo and Wanda, and they, uh, Cosmo and Wanda, accidentally had their own memories away, erased, so they completely forget too. But the bottom line, Crocker forgets all about his fairies, and then the townspeople forget all about all the good things that he and Cosmo and Wanda did together. And once it's all over with, then they start chasing Crocker, because, you know, it's funny to torment kids in this show. However, once Crocker is safe, he discovers a message that he gave himself that fairy godparents exist. And it's from that, it's from that that the obsession has started. Because Timmy went back in time in the first place, that is what led Crocker to become obsessed with, with discovering that fairy godparents are real. We even see this a handful of times in his later life. We discover... <clears throat> we discover that in college he was actually a well a well adjusted student. He was probably very well liked and popular. However, when he reveals the idea of fairy godparents, specifically the idea of capturing kids and forcing them to hand over their fairies, he of course was laughed at by the community. And then we discover that Crocker was very well liked. He was, but at the same time, he did allow his he did allow a toxic obsession to basically control and rule his life. He has spent his entire life trying to prove that fairies are real, and because of all the ridicule, all the harassment that he had to suffer all throughout that time, it only adds fuel to the fire. Not only is he determined to prove that fairies exist, but he also wants to get even with everybody who ever made fun of him. But the saddest part of all is that it probably didn't have to be that way. We discover in one of the episodes, It's a Wishful Life, where Timmy basically pulls a It's a Wonderful Life, seeing what life was like if he was never born. 
And in this universe, we discover that Crocker is a very successful college professor. And he's handsome. And girls are looking at him like he's Indiana Jones. So, yeah, if Crocker didn't waste his entire life hunting fairies, which, yeah, Timmy did indirectly cause, as pointed out by Jorgen von Strangle, then he could have been a very successful teacher and living a very, a very impressive life, instead of being a grade school teacher where he very much hates his job and has stated repeatedly it's just to make ends meet and plus and plus he gets to be around kids so he can hunt for fairies granted there's a bit of an undertale right there that's almost creeper vibes about it but i don't want to get into that anyway anyway crocker could have been a very successful teacher all he had to do was basically put what was in the past in the past he could have been a successful professor. In fact, it's actually very much hinted that one of his childhood friends, Timmy's principal, who's also Crocker's boss, at the very least, his boss, while he's teaching grade school, had a crush on him, and may have even had it after they, and may have even had an on-again, off-again crush as they were adults. I mean, she was shown to actually be pretty smitten with him in college, so who knows, maybe they could have ended up together. It's actually a very sad story about Denzel Crocker when you really think of it, especially when it didn't have to be that way. Now I'm going to lay some truth on you guys. We all have a toxic obsession. We all do. But how do we know when it becomes a toxic obsession? When we start to put everything else behind us. And... I'm talking about our self-care, our mental health, doing things that are need to be done, like taking care of ourselves, feeding ourselves, getting up and walking around every once in a while, eating good food, cleaning up our homes. That's where it becomes a toxic obsession, especially if we waste money on waste money we don't have for the sake of that obsession. I mean, Crocker's toxic obsession is exaggerated because it's a cartoon show, but it could easily be an allegory for anything else, like um, like being an obsessive gambler, because being a gambler and a losing gambler, you can make an argument that is pretty toxic, because there are... There are those obsessed with the idea of gambling, of hitting that jackpot, but at the same time, they're extremely superstitious about every little thing, which is a bit fair, I guess. But at the same time, there are people who go into debt over this. There are people who lose their families and their homes. That's probably the best example I can think of. There's also people who are obsessed with vanity, like working out until they get that movie star Greek statue physique that is, for the most part, a little unattainable. I mean, it can be attainable, but at the same time, you have to spend the rest of your life living up to that to that image of yourself. And I'm also reminded of the... Uh, of the meme with Omni-Man, where somebody's asking, when are you satisfied with your body's physique? And the Omni-Man meme basically goes, that's the neat part, you don't, or something like that. So yeah, work out for good health and because you want to, but don't do it until it's unhealthy for your mindset. You're probably doing a hell of a lot better job than I am, and I can promise you that. Or you could be obsessed with your job. And I know, there's nothing wrong with being successful in life, excess, successful in your career. But at the same time, if that's all you're devoting your energy to, uh, like you're not taking proper care of yourself, you're neglecting your family and friends, that can easily be considered a toxic obsession. Everything has moderation, everybody. Take time for your job, take time for your hobbies, take time for your dreams, for your family, for your friends, for your health. Get enough sleep. And yeah, and you know what? I'm even going to play devil's advocate here a bit. 
being, being, I struggle with toxic obsessions myself. I really do. I want to, I basically want to succeed at everything. And there are times where I do go a bit overboard. I work so many crazy hours as soon as I get home from my day job, whether it's training at one in the morning or staying up until, ironically, staying up until uh, four o'clock in the morning, now working on a new book or an audio or something for YouTube. I may not be the best example of all this, but you know, but you know what they say, do as I say, not as I do. I mean, I do want those things, but at the same time, even I need to remind myself to reel it in every once in a while. And yes, I am working on it. I'm not flawless, everybody. I'm a work in progress, and you're no different. Every once in a while, we just need that little reminder to keep us in check. If I can do it, so can you. This is your senpai telling you to take care of yourself, handle that business, keep your dreams intact, but... It becomes a different story when you let run your entire life. There's nothing wrong with having dreams and goals, but it does become a problem when it's unhealthy. All right, I think I've had enough for now of my little rant. All right, until next time, everybody, this is Jeremy Senpai signing off. And don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, thank you so much for listening, and please have a wonderful day. If you don't have a wonderful day, then I definitely hope that it gets better. Until next time!